Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're going to talk about your sensitivity settings in first person shooters on the PC. There's a lot of pros and cons to high sensitivity and low sensitivity gaming, and it's not necessarily straightforward answers to what you should choose for your gaming and why. I recently changed from a high sensitivity to a relatively low sensitivity, and it's made a pretty big difference in my gameplay. Now I started thinking about this because I've been playing more Counter-Strike recently, and I have a pretty high sensitivity for first person shooter gaming, at least for games games like Counter-Strike. In Battlefield it might be a little bit more within the normal parameters because you need to react quickly and turn around all the time in Battlefield, but Counter-Strike is certainly more about knowing your lanes, knowing your angles, and needing a nice low sensitivity to control your recoil. It's not to say that you can't play any game with a higher sensitivity as long as you're skilled enough with it, but there are many benefits to a lower sensitivity style of gaming, and transitioning to low sense from high sense can be a bit of a learning curve, but I'm already starting to see some of the major benefits from it. Now throughout this video, I'm gonna be using a term called centimeters to 360, and that is the distance in centimeters that you have to move your mouse to complete a full 360 in game. And this is really the only way to standardize your sensitivity settings when comparing them to other player sensitivities, because on PC, there's at least three different ways to modify your sensitivity. A few more if you start customizing with your X and Y ratio on your mouse. And when calculating this measurement, it's important to note that just about all serious players turn off mouse acceleration because that will affect this measurement and make it very inconsistent. So if you find yourself measuring your distance to 360 and it's being different every time, you probably have mouse acceleration on and you should turn that off if you know how to. If you have a gaming mouse, chances are it's either turned off by default or you can just adjust it in your mouse drivers. Now my CM to 360 ratio before I updated it was about 22. And this worked fine in Battlefield for most things. Uh, it allowed me to whip around quickly, engage targets that were all around me, but uh, it didn't give me great precision control and great recoil control. Now when I started playing Counter-Strike, I realized that I needed to lower my sensitivity. It just felt better having low sensitivity in Counter-Strike. And I wanted to emulate the sensitivity throughout all shooters. That's generally what I do in games is I match my sensitivity regardless regardless of what shooter game I'm playing. And Counter-Strike's a little tricky because it doesn't have aiming down sights uh, adjustment, so you don't have dual sensitivity settings. So what I do is I adjust my aiming down sight sensitivity in other shooters to match what it is in Counter-Strike. Now when I lowered my sensitivity, I pretty much cut it in half. I chose 40 centimeters, tried it out in game, it felt well, and it's also kind of the average sensitivity that a lot of the pro CSGO players use. And so I felt like that was a good starting point. I might modify it in the future, if I feel like something else is working out better for me. But so far, uh, that's what I'm using here in this gameplay in Battlefield. So it's 40 centimeters to 360 when I'm aiming down sight, and it gives me much better precision control. It's great for sniping, certainly, and I've been testing it out with assault rifles and stuff too. It doesn't allow me to whip around as quickly as I used to before, I just have to drag my mouse further, which actually inspired me to get a larger mouse pad. Jack Frags recommended this large Steel Series mouse pad. Um, I'll link it in the video description description if you guys are curious, but basically that allows me to get much larger movements at a lower sensitivity to whip around quickly when I need to. So although I can't whip around 180 degrees quite as casually as I used to, it just requires a bigger movement now. So it hasn't really slowed me down too much in that department, but there is certainly a learning curve. Whenever you adjust your sensitivity, especially in a drastic way as I did, where I basically cut it in half, so it's, it's totally different for me now. It took me quite a while to warm up to, and I'm still learning the basics of it. I don't feel 100% at home, but I will eventually get the hang of it, and then I'll feel much faster in close quarters once I just get more used to the bigger gestures on the mouse pad. Now you may notice that my gameplay visuals here look a little bit smoother in general. I mean, I am zooming in constantly with an 8x scope, so that might be a little jarring, but for the most part, it should be smoother than you guys are used to seeing, at least on my channel. And that's because when I play on a higher sensitivity, it creates a jerky looking image quality, which isn't quite as perceptible when you're playing at 144 hertz and getting a high frame rate, but when the video is rendered at at 60 FPS, it can be a little bit more noticeable 
on YouTube and just come off as a little bit more jerky and stuff like that. One of the benefits to having a very high sensitivity is the ability to look around all the time very quickly, which gives you great environmental awareness and just the ability to keep an eye on what's going on around you. You'll probably be less inclined to play that way on a lower sensitivity just because you have to move your arm and your mouse so far in order to do just a 180 in this game. You're not going to be whipping around constantly checking your environment. I mean, you certainly could. It might just get a little bit tiring, especially when you're playing 40, 50 minute long rounds. I'm not saying there aren't players on low sensitivity that do whip around and look all over the place all the time, but it's generally just a symptom of having lower sensitivity. You might get a little bit more tunnel vision than a player with high sensitivity. And because of this, it's easy to see why Counter-Strike players have such low sensitivity because that game is very much about uh, guarding one lane or approaching one lane or looking at one angle or one corner. You're not necessarily whipping around all the time in that game. So it makes a lot of sense to have low sensitivity sensitivity for Counter-Strike. In Battlefield, it's a little bit more questionable. Depends what game mode you're playing, especially in rush game modes where you're attacking in one direction and you don't necessarily need to whip around all the time. It makes much more sense. TDM, not so much sense. So it's very interesting to see how sensitivity preferences could change from game to game. I did, however, notice that when playing with assault rifles, I was able to track more precisely and be a little bit more accurate overall, which is really nice considering that you usually need to hit somebody four, five, even six times to take him down in this game so being able to stay on target very cleanly is nice. One area that I'm still having considerable trouble with is when people are in close quarters and running past me quickly, tracking them can be very hard with a low sensitivity because sometimes they run faster than you're used to moving your hand across your mouse pad so you literally have to like race your hand across the mouse pad as fast as possible just to keep up with them and that's just not an ideal environment to try and be precise in so that is one area where I can say without question that I have a disadvantage in compared to high sensitivity gameplay. Now at some point during this video you might have said, hey level cap, why are you using the 338 recon sniper rifle? Does this have something to do with low sensitivity gameplay? Absolutely not. This is a crummy sniper rifle, I don't want to use it anymore and I'm mastering it right now during this video. In fact this is kill number 499 and here we go lining up for kill 500. Gotta wait a little second for that dog tag to show up, but this is actually going to be a great example of me not being able to track quick enough with my low sensitivity to hit this target right here. I missed the bolt action shot and managed to finish him off with the pistol, but it was just interesting because when lining up for that specific shot, I remember just feeling like I couldn't move my mouse fast enough to actually track that target. It's something that I imagine I'll be able to compensate for with more practice, but at the moment it is one of the trickier areas of low sensitivity. Overall though, I feel like I have more control in this game. I'm really happy with the sensitivity shift, even though it was sort of brought on by Counter-Strike, inspired by Counter-Strike. It's certainly been beneficial in Battlefield, and I'd recommend any player out there, if you've been using one sensitivity for a long time and not too happy with your gameplay, maybe think about changing up your sensitivity. I'll link both the mouse pad and a cool document I found that showed all the sensitivities of the pro Counter-Strike players listed in one spreadsheet. As always guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.